Welcome back, everyone. Um, as you may remember, this is where we left off. Um, our little tower here is just shooting constantly, and it is hunting down the uh, soldiers that is that are running along our track. So let's continue on our tower defense game. Uh, hopefully, you like my new setup with the uh, the thing on the left. It's like this way somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so let's continue. Um, today we're going to be learning how to uh, let me talk um, set up a UI that will allow us to drag and drop our uh, towers into our game so first we're going to create a canvas later I'm going to just call it UI we're going to save it here in as UI uh, we save it and in our main menu we're going to have to just drag in our UI and UI is in here and transform to just be zero zero um, as we did before, we no longer have a camera. Um, here we have a power that we can probably just delete because we're going to learn how to drag and drop into that. So the first thing we're going to do is create the actual layout for the shop, as you might want to call it. So let's make a panel. Um, for the sake of the video, I always usually use panels just because um, they're pretty quick and easy to um, do. I'm going to make this at 944. Uh, uh, 2944 and this is going to be the background let me just open up my reference so this is going to be the panel um, we're going to create a uh, what is it when was this um, a flow container um, you can use any sort of container honestly um, but I just recently learned how to use this one so I'm going to use this one so for the flow container we're going to add a bunch of uh panels but we're going those are going to be different children so we're not going to make that just yet um for this though to set it up we're going to i'm just going to copy basically all the things in my reference for the size i'm going to do 177 for this we're going to do that for the position 66 66 this cell is going to be three there's going to be a reason why we do that later um and the separation which is going to be theme override i'm going to do 10 and and now we're going to have to make our uh, shop buttons essentially so to do that generally you'd think okay well let's make a button but i'm actually going to make a panel and it's going to be a reason as to why we make a panel um for this we're going to save it in towers i believe i saved it mine in towers yeah i did and i called it red power panel i'm going to save it in our main i guess and then put move it to towers so here we go we have our towers in here Let's rename this to Red Tower Panel. And let's just add a script to it. It's not gonna be built in, that's okay. Uh, and then here we're just gonna add a sprite. But for the sprite, what we're actually gonna do is we're going to add in our tower defense tile. It's just so we have this guy. And this guy, I'm going to scale it to 1.23 and 1.25. There we go. Or it's just going to scale to that. Um, and then for the panel, let me just check the things I use. Um, okay, so this is important. We're going to use the custom minimize size. We're going to do 80 and 80. Um, and the... Ooh, why is that not right? Ah, that's why. Okay, so for this guy, the position is going to be 40 and 40, so it's going to be on top. And there you go, there's our panel. Um, it's not, obviously, it's not exact towards the lid, but that's okay. Um, and that is it for that. For now, and now we're going to take this and we're going to pop these in to our flow container here. So now let's take our red panel and pop this in. And so now whenever I duplicate it, because the flow container has a set constraint, I'm going to separate it. And because it's a flow container, it's gonna start go popping in from the right to the left, to the right, to the left, et cetera. So it doesn't matter how many I pop in until it kind of maxes out. And I think it'll kind of overflow a little bit, but we're not gonna worry about that. You can kind of worry about your, um, how you wanna set this up and how many towers you want whatever um but this is um, as many towers as i can fit basically they're all the same but it doesn't matter so in each one what we're going to do is we're going to actually use um, gui input um, there's a reason we're using gui input and not just input because gui input will allow us to check only if the mouse is into our tower and not the like the only the panel and not outside the panel so if we had input i'm almost sure you can actually double check um, check and maybe tell me if i'm right or wrong but uh, other sorts of input 
will check any input. So this will only check input if our mouse is on top of the like panel. So what we can do in here, uh, we're gonna do a lot of things. But there's two things we're going to need first. So first, we're going to have our tower. We're going to preload that. Hopefully that is an error. OK, nice. And we're also going to have a current tile variable that we're going to have to actually be using in a, another video. Um, but for now, I'm going to add a bunch of things. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is after, as every time I do something, um, have an input inside of a panel, I'm going to basically instantiate our tower, our temporary tower, all right? Um, the reason we're doing this inside and not outside is because we want to remake it every time. Um, we'll kind of get into why that later. So now the way we can check for input is let's actually, let me print this out. So if we say print event, this is a good way for you to test this. So when I play, now I have a bunch of things here. If you look at the print, whoop, let me move to the left, this way, right here, you can see a bunch of printed things, right? So if I go onto one of these and I just click, you can see I clicked here. So there's a uh, event uh, input event mouse motion. So obviously that's just motion. Um, there's button masks. There's also button indexes. But also keep in mind this one has a button mask as well. There's button mask here, and these are all the, like things. So this this is like um, press down and then press up. I'm pretty sure is mass button mask zero. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, things that allow this for. Um, Godot 4 has changed it. I think it used to be button ID, but now it's must button mask. And this is actually really powerful because now we can do this. So there's a bunch of different things we can check for. So we can say if event um, is mouse button, so if we're clicking, what are we going to do? Um, we also want to check if it's button mask zero or one, sorry. And that is um, button mouse down. So if I click down, then I'm gonna, let's say print uh, left button down. Uh, there we go. And we can also check for, yeah, I'm gonna do this one first because that's the opposite, uh, input mouse button mask zero, and that's uh, up. So now we can say button mask up. And so now when I go in here, um, we can see on the you can see my printed values to the to my face next to my face every time I click if I go down and I click up it'll you can test this for yourself it'll release essentially so we can now test for or check for these things right and so this is very powerful and useful so another uh, event that we're going to actually be checking for is LF event motion so this is the same thing but uh, for we're going to check if we're in motion or not so for now we're going to pass we don't error actually we'll comment. So this is going to be left click down, uh, left click down, I think. That's it. And then this one will be left click down drag. This one will be left click up, and that's it. Okay, so in our left click down, um, all we want to do is actually pretty simple. We're just going to, let me just do this. We're going to add our tower. So we're going to add a child of tower and we're going to set the position equal to the event global position, um, the global position of the temp tower to the global to uh, position of our event. So we're going to just follow the mouse. We're going to create our tower and make it follow the mouse. And we're also going to do this inside of our event motion. Now, okay, no errors, awesome. So now when I click, ooh, why, first of all, why did it give me a bullet? Okay, we gotta load the tower, I believe. Is this the tower? Yes, it is. Okay, sorry about that. We have to load the tower in my reference. I have it as a different name. Okay, so now we have added a child and this global position was equal to the global position of our event. So now what we can try to do is get that child and constantly update it. So we can't actually reference it as temp tower because temp tower has now been added. We've added it and it's kind of, it's not gone, but we can't reference it as that. So instead what we do is say get child one. Um, a good way to actually avoid this error Actually, no, I'll, that's the secret. I'm gonna get to this later. Um, but now we should be able to take this and move it along 
our mouse. So every time I move, um, it follows. But once I let go, it just stops right there. So let's do a few other things. Um, that's going to allow us to follow. Um, now when we let go, which is this part, what do we want to do? Well, um, let's... We're going to basically, first of all, we're going to queue free the child that we currently have because if I, if I do this, let's go to remote, let's go to our UI panel, here we go. Here's our red tower. If I click the first one, you can see the tower is added kind of above me. I can't really show you, but very up, up there, uh, the red tower, um, it's been added. But now when I let go, I queue free. So I want to delete it. And what we're going to do actually is we're going to destroy that one, and we're gonna create a new one because we've already instantiated every time I do something, so we can do that, that's pretty easy. So now I can say, um, here we go. We can get the path of our towers, and we're gonna actually just put the tower in where it should be. So the original tower that we added, whoops. Let me just space this out properly if I can. Jesus, there we go. Um, so the original tower, this one, we just added it here because it doesn't really matter. Um, but this one, we have to make sure that we add it in our main towers, right? So that way we have them all in one spot. Um, and then we're gonna set the position to the global position of the event, and we're gonna get our node area and hide it, which we're gonna actually do in a second um, because we haven't added that yet. So we're gonna err if we try that now. So in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a panel and this will allow us to have a area. Basically, it's gonna it's gonna kind of copy this collision shape. And so let me copy what I have, so you don't have to test around and play with it. So the size. I'm gonna go to inspect. We're gonna go to layout. We're gonna go to transform. The size is gonna be 800 by 800. The position is going to be negative 400 negative 400 and then this is the fun part um, we're going to change the style so uh here we go i'm going to go to the style um style flat box we're going to style it and in that style we're going to make it red so to make it red we're going to just drag these there and then i think that's almost it we're going to go to the quarter radius now and just drag these as 450. And as you might be able to see, the radius is not right. So we're actually going to change this and make it 400. So now it'll be the exact same. Uh, the panel, we're going to go back here. Um, the reason it's the same is because of the position, by the way, or sorry, the size. So if I increase the size, it'll kind of increase. Obviously, it doesn't increase as it is coming along, but that's okay. We'll be doing some things to kind of play around with that later. So next up uh, is visibility. We're going to not want it to be completely solid. We're going to get it to actually be modulate we're going to get this to be uh zero zero and this is going to be let me check my reference 80. i'm going to make this 80. you can make it whatever you want but it, i found 80 to be pretty good so now what we can do is change this to area first so that way we don't get an error now we have this guy and when i drop it it heard why is that i guess because it didn't change or didn't set okay there we go so now when i I can now drag and drop towers. Awesome. Boom. Um, one last thing to, as you can see, obviously, this guy is massive and we don't want that. So let's go to our tower. And what we're gonna do um, is, I found through testing uh, that if we scale it to 0 0.32, it makes it look about the same size as it normally would. So. There you go. This was just through testing. Um, the reason why it's so big is because originally, um, when we add it in here, add the child here, the UI is going to allow it to just be a UI. It's, it's on our canvas layer. So that's why it's so big, right? Whereas if we added it to the path um, here, it'll be different. You can do that and you can add it in the path if you want, but we're adding it into the, as a child of the panel, which is why it's so big. And then when we actually drop it, it becomes so small. But I just found that the scale here as 0 0.23 is almost the same. So it, it looks almost identical. Um, so as you can see, it's very identical. Okay. Um, and that is how we drag and drop. Let's now do, do, do let's do a few more bugs. So let's kind of identify some bugs that might be present. So if I drag and I 
uh, right click, you can see on the top le right, there is now a thing over there. And I can't even click anymore because that's in the way. But if I do it again, and I right click, uh, yeah, right click, same thing. And it's starting to spawn a bunch of those guys. And we don't want that. That's kind of a problem. So that's a bug I actually found. And I couldn't really figure out a good way to fix this. A good way to fix is a kind of quick fix. Um, basically, I'm going to check if there's more than one child every time in that panel. And if there is, we're just going to delete it. Um, because every time I do something, it, whether it's a motion or right click, we're going to do something. We're going to check for all this, right? So I can do that in here. Um, another good thing or another good way to avoid an error, um, whenever you get a child, so here we're getting child one and we're queuing free. Whenever you get a child anywhere, it doesn't matter. It's good practice to... In this case, we're only check. We only should have one child, which is the sprite, right? So if we have more than one child, we're gonna delete them. So we can do that by saying get child count. If child count is more than one, we'll delete it because we don't need it. So we'll do the same thing here. And now we should never really error. So now um, I also can right click, and it's you can see it pop up on the top right, but it disappears pretty quickly after I move or do anything. Um, we will find other ways um, to do that as well, or I will, sorry, I will kind of help um, fix that bug later on. But for now, this is good enough. Um, what else do we have? Let me double check. We've gotten everything. Okay, that's it. Um, one last thing we'll add, I guess, in this video is what if I don't want to add it? What if I want to add my tower, but I don't want to add it at all? So what if I pick a tower and I don't want it? I want to like sell it or undo what I just clicked. Well, I'll, I would realistically want to drop it on the side, right? But now, as you can see in the back, you can see my tower there. I don't want it there. I want it to like delete or be sold kind of, right? Cancel my, ca my purchase essentially. Well, there's a pretty easy way to do this. There's a lot of ways to do this. One way I did this, I'm just going to copy this entire thing. Nope, I lied. I'm gonna just copy this, this small thing here. I'm going to basically check for if the global position is greater than, or sorry, the event global position dot X is greater than or equal to 2944. Why that number? Well, if you remember earlier, our panel size is 2944. That's where the panel is, right? So now when I play, if I drag, I can drag anywhere because it's not checking for position. But if I drop it here, it's going to disappear. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to queue free, right? So we're just queue freeing. But that other side is purchased. So if I drop it here, it'll purchase. And that is a weird bug. That has never happened before. Let me double check. What are we doing here? Da, da, da. Ah, sorry. We still have to check and delete the old node that's why so now yeah there we go um that is it so hopefully you're on, you've learned how to do some input stuff uh i would definitely recommend checking out the input motion on all the other things if you want to just learn about it in a testing way just print event and you will see all the events that we like we did earlier so definitely check that out um, if you want to learn more and you want like more help um, i'm always i have discord um that's usually we have a lot of people helping out if you need help um which it's growing which is awesome i love that um you guys are joining i'm also going to try to stream uh at least once a week um i might be a bit busy with school obviously coming up but i will try to stream as much as i can so definitely follow my twitch down below um, i also have a patreon so you can definitely check that out what else um go sub go subscribe to my youtube Follow, um, I don't know, whatever. Um, like and comment my video as well. That definitely helps out the algorithm. So go do that. If you don't, I will find you and I will delete all your projects. I will delete all your personal projects and you will cry. So go do that. Um, anyways, I will see you guys next time. Hopefully you guys like this video. Peace out.